But I used to think I was an introvert because I just had so much trouble making friends. And I think, yeah, I was all like, my whole life, I think I've been too nice and too available and too like trying to do anything to make not pe make people like me because that's not that wasn't the goal, but like just to have friends and show my friends that I love them. I'm Lisa F. Mesco and welcome back to the Under the Spotlight podcast. I still don't know what to name it. I feel like the perfect name will come to me. I don't feel like that. I feel like there isn't a perfect name out there, but we're going to pray and pretend there is until I think of one. I feel like Under the Spotlight works. I'm going to be talking about different things and putting different things under the spotlight. And also, I'm an aspiring actor and, you know, under the spotlight. Some ideas I still have is when the curtain falls, curtain call, behind stage doors, mic check, which is what I think my friend Mike should name his podcast, the spinning podcast and spinning man. Those last two are because I like to spin. <laughs> I actually realized I did a horrible job of introducing myself last week. So I even said it in there and then I introduced myself for like three seconds and just kept going with what I was talking about. But it was the new year, even though that episode isn't up yet for me. I wanted to have a new year's related episode. So we're going to talk about me today. But I thought I'd tell you my whole life story, which is going to go well and I'm going to lose my train of thought 10,000 times, go on very many different tangents and blah, blah, blah. But I hope you guys like that. Basically, my name, like... Like I said, five times. My name is Lisa Feliz Diana Eftimescu. I am originally from Romania. Uh, both my parents are Romanian and they both were born and raised in Romania. My dad moved out of Romania when he was 26. And then my mom left to marry him, actually, not to marry him, to move in with him when she was like 30 something, which is quite a little cute romantic love story. They met in kindergarten and then they went to almost the same schools their whole lives, lived in almost the same place, like consistently their whole life, which I think is crazy. And then my mom was in the same grade as my dad's sister, just a year above him, and asked for his email address one time. And then they started emailing, cause he lived in Germany, she lived in Romania. And then they would meet up like halfway, which is Vienna or wherever. And I just think it's a really cute little love story. And the craziest thing is my dad's parents, my grandparents actually met through letters, like my grandma. And I tell this full story sometime, not today, but the basis of it is my grandma and my, but well, both my grandparents participated in this thing where you'd like send someone a postcard and then you'd get a postcard from them, like across the country. My grandma got a postcard from my grandfather and then the story is a bit more complicated, but eventually they met up and then they got married and their 60 year wedding anniversary is actually this year which is absolutely crazy and i love them so much they're actually so sweet some of the best people i've ever met in my life so kind so genuine and so in love and they take care of each other still and oh, they're just really cute and i love them so much i don't know where i was going with that that <laughs> that 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 i am romanian um but i was born in germany both my parents lived here when they had me i have a twin sister um, her name is Ines. I love her to pieces. She's currently in Rotterdam studying economics and econometric, which is quite different from drama school, but uh, she's just the best. I love her so much. Um, maybe someday I'll convince her to be on the podcast with me. This feels like one of those draw my life YouTube videos from like back in the day. So we were born in 2004 in Munich, Germany, and I've lived there my whole life. I've never lived anywhere else until now. Four months ago, I moved to England to go to drama school, which is later in the story. This is such a weird thing to do. I just like want a very organic way for you guys to get to know me, obviously, and kind of tell my life story, but I don't want to overshare it. <laughs> so I moved to, oh my God, look at my neck. If you can't, if you're watching the audio version, just my neck is really irritated and, um, it's so itchy and I've been trying not to scratch it because that's just gonna make the redness and the irritation worse And like it hurt. It doesn't hurt that bad though It's just so itchy and so hard not to touch it And then the problem is like it was super itchy on my left and right side in the upper area So I was trying not to scratch it, but I would scratch right underneath just to kind of like almost feel like I'm doing something about it And then that area is now also a little bit irritated. So love that for me but yeah, I guess the most significant event in my life after that is, I mean, I'm really lucky. I've had a very normal, not normal, but very like, I don't even know how to explain, I guess, nuclear family, happy childhood. My parents both have good jobs, you know, I've always had everything I needed and way more and I'm so lucky for that. And then when I was four, I was diagnosed with, diagnosed with hearing loss, I guess is how you would put it. And basically I'm half deaf in each ear. I wear these hearing aids um to fix that and it sort of fixes it i want to do a full episode talking about this i've written some poetry about it it's hard to explain what it's like 
well, for because you'll never understand it unless you, you know, deal with hearing loss yourself. But also, it's just hard to strike the balance of like, yes, this sucks that I have to deal with this. But at the same time, it's really, really not that bad. Because yes, I am hard of hearing and it does make my life more difficult. Um, and it's hard to hear things sometimes. Whoa, crazy, right? Um, but at the same time, like so much of the hearing is I'm so lucky, like cancel that out. Um, most people are so nice, so supportive about it. And I don't actually have a lot of access needs, which again, I am so, so incredibly grateful for and feel so lucky to be able to even say. Uh, but at the same time, the hard part is just explaining what I need because I don't know what I need. Like, I don't know how to articulate what I need because 90% of the time I don't need anything. And then the stuff you miss are like the little things and they just pile up on top of each other. Like if you miss, you know, a joke and then we're laughing and they're like confused, like one time that's fine, whatever. But then it happens more often. But like, how do you like, I don't know how to explain to people what parts I need them to be louder at or what I need them to do because I like, I don't know myself. Um, so I guess it's something to learn. And I never, I used to say it doesn't affect me at all, which was bullshit. And I, I didn't mean like at all at all, but like, I think the older I get, the more aware of it I become, which is a bit annoying. And it's not like, I'm not self really, not really self-conscious about it. And it's not something like I don't bring up to people or whatever, like I don't mind. Literally the first day I met my roommates, I told them about it. And I, my teachers at school know about it most, cause they have, well, they don't have to, but I told them. Most of my classmates know about it now too. And everything like, it's all very chill. And I'm not like worried about people knowing about it or anything. Like I don't want to hide it. But the gist of it, there's little things that make it difficult to hear or to understand what's going on. And it's hard to realize what those things are and then draw attention to them and fix them. So live, laugh, love. And then part of the other issue is I've moved here and you know, English is my third language, even though I sound pretty American. English is also my best language, which we'll get into more as I tell my life story. I've never really been around English accents that much that I think combined with English not being my third language, combined with being slightly hard of hearing make like this more of an adjustment since moving here, just because I'm not used to being around them. And I, I never realized how much of like talking and hearing and listening is like voice recognition. Like there's so much where, you know the feeling when you don't understand what someone's saying and then a second later you do, like you realize what they said. Like that's not you, you know, hearing it again and realizing it, that's you like processing it in your brain. And so much of like listening is, you know, like I hear better when I see someone. Does that make sense? No, but kind of. Um, Cause you can see their lips move and it's not like I can't read lips. Seeing someone's lips like kind of assists you in the direction of the conversation they're going in, what they're saying and where that's going. And I think being able to predict that kind of stuff helps me, especially more than it might help other people because they don't need it. But then, you know, I've kind of lost that moving to a completely new country where the way people talk is different. And especially in, in the UK, it's crazy how many different accents there are. I think it's not unique to the UK, but for such a small country, it has a crazy amount of accents. And that's because you have to think about like, the US is a very new country, for example. So I think compared, like you have states or groups of states that have like very similar accents. Obviously they're not gonna be exactly the same, nor will I be able to differentiate them. I'm getting better though. I can, I can kind of recognize New York now, but in the UK, you'll go from one town to another town and they'll have a completely different accent because there's they've just been a country for so long. And like those accents have really had fucking centuries to like be ingrained into people and like become very unique and different and have small differences. So it's just, I don't know where I was going with that fuck. It's basically hard to just like process all, it's not even like processing all that cause like it get into like confusing to me or anything. It's just, there's a lot of differences that you have to cope with and so many different accents that you have to like navigate, which can make things difficult. And it's, it definitely like is a culture shock even um, but something I think I am slowly adjusting to and like learning and it's even like I didn't even realize like how much of an adjustment it can be Especially for like people who aren't from here like foreigners or immigrants or people whose lang first language is English Or even people who haven't lived in the UK because I think even like American people have trouble like Distinguishing or understanding English accents sometimes. Oh my god, it makes such a difference and it is very confusing My obvious solution is clearly just watching more TV with British accents. So I guess I got a watch more TV. The great thing about being an actor is you really can be productive <laughs> by watching movies and TV and stuff. And to be fair, I look at it ever, like since I've started like any sort of drama actor, actor training, whatever, I've always paid more and more attention to movies and like acting in movies and TV shows and whatever. The more I get into this course, especially, I just notice a huge difference in how much I pay attention to it. Cause I'm just constantly focusing on it and like noticing people acting and analyzing it and what works and what doesn't work and why. And you know, trying to apply that to my own acting even, which Kate, 
if you're watching, she's not watching, she's my course leader, I would be so proud. Well, I feel like it's the bare minimum. That was a fucking long tangent about having hearing aids. But I can, I want to do a full episode on that, like explain some of it more, explain like how my hearing works. It might be interesting because it, it's not as straightforward as 50%. When I was like five, I then got hearing aids. I've had them ever since, not the same one. I remember so vividly that moment after I got the hearing aids and they were like, you know, set up, calibrated to my hearing and whatever. Stepping out into the street and hearing the street for the first time and just like oh my god it was so like that's all i can explain it was so loud and it sounded so almost like plasticky or metallic-y in my ears because i was like i just like not that i'd never heard that sound before because i would have heard that sound before just much quieter but i'd never known how much of a presence it had in people's life and it like it stepped me into their world like the world of hearing being here it's, it's a line in my poem the world of hearing and the world of not but it was such a shock and I never expected it. And I think nothing can make the difference and the p lack of people's understanding of how I hear versus how other people hear more clear than that. Because hearing like normal people in quotation marks for the first time was such a shock. I, I, I never could have imagined it before because you, you can't just imagine hearing, you can't imagine a new fucking color because they don't exist. Well, they might exist, but not for us because we can't fucking see them. So we can't imagine it, you know? You can't imagine hearing properly unless you do, until you do. And it's even like, you know, people saying when they get glasses for the first time, they can see the details of the leaves on trees, that kind of stuff. Like, that's kind of what it was for me, but in hearing. Oh, also, I'm sure you could actually, it would be so cool. Can someone do this? Create an app where you can put in like your hearing percentage and whatever. There's like a diagram you get of your hearing. Maybe I'll insert a picture. If you could insert those settings into an app and then it plays you how someone would hear stuff, I think that would just raise so much awareness and actually help people understand what it's like to be, you know, hard of hearing a little bit more. But anyway, we're done with this tangent. Then when I was sick, I'd gone to a German kindergarten and then my parents wanted me to go to an international school in Munich called Munich International School. Whoa, crazy. So the last three months of kindergarten, my sister and I actually went to an English kindergarten instead of the German one we'd been at. I actually, I remember a fair amount of it, nothing like detailed or anything, but that's when we first started learning English at six years old. And then we started at my school when we were six. I was there for 12 years. I just graduated in last May, which is already actually fucking long time, long time ago now, which is crazy but yeah i think that going to that school up until now is probably well not the but one of the most impactful experiences of my life just because it changes you completely to learn a new language and just to be around so many international students and people from all over the world i think you learn so much about different cultures i'm, I'm i don't want to be advertising my school i mean i like i did love my school it's not perfect no school is perfect but there are a lot of things i did love about it i'm so absolutely incredibly grateful to my parents for sending me there because I wouldn't be here today. If, as in, I wouldn't be here in England today doing what I was. I might not even have a YouTube channel or it would be in German. I wouldn't have the life I have today and I like my life. And I made so many incredible friends. I've learned so much. I, it, like it, learning different languages is the best thing you can do to just like open your mind to a different thing. And there's so many times, not so many times, but there's a fair amount of times where I just like the words don't exist in English, or they don't exist in German, or they don't exist in Romanian. Well, in Romanian, they might exist, but I just don't know them because my Romanian is good, but not great. They just add so much depth to your life. You can learn a lot of the language or teach your kids another language. I highly recommend. My parents, they had to take our books away as kids because me and my sister, we just fucking love to read. And I attribute that to like being able to speak English as well as I can. I read fucking Harry Potter 20,000 times when I was a kid. The first time in like second grade and I was deeply traumatized by Voldemort and very scared of him for a very, very, very long time. I'm sorry, he must not be named. I don't know. I was too young to read that, but I did anyway. And then I read Twilight and I read The Hunger Games and I read fucking millions of books. Um, not actually, but a lot of books because I just, I love reading so much. I always have and it like, it helped me learn English, helped me speak English. It helped me be creative. It, it's really, anyway, I'm not a fucking condescending, explain to you why you should read person. I'm moving on. Also, I want to be so clear. I'm so excited to talk about super juicy things as well, like dating and romance and uni and uni activity, drinking, not too much so that my parents don't kill me and I can still get jobs. So yeah, literally comment whatever you want to hear it down below. Share some crazy uni stories, freshers week adventures, which I'm editing that. <laughs> I have a freshers week vlog. You'll know from last episode if you watched it, which you should. That I have a freshers week vlog. I vlogged in September and I haven't edited it yet, but I will. What day is it? January 9th. I'm hoping January 20th is the day I edit it. TBD. Such a procrastinator. It's actually so bad. But yes, just let me know what things you guys want me to talk about and I will talk about them probably. Um, I don't shut up. I actually don't know how to shut up. I think I said that last episode, which is why I wanted to finally start a podcast. Oh, oh my god, I stabbed myself in my eye yesterday with my apple pencil. I was just talking and gesturing with it, and it went right in my eye, and I think
is right like right there it kind of hurts a little bit Oops. i have no idea where i was in my life story right so i went to that school for 12 years I had a pretty like impactful experience on my life but it's also it's so interesting now like being here being in a private school is definitely weird it's not the way it, like i would say in the uk i think there's a big like tension like drama whatever between private schools and public schools i wouldn't say it's the same here the public schools are quite good in germany it's definitely strange because i didn't represent the norm necessarily at private school either compared to some of the people there but it's really interesting and humbling and like it makes me so grateful seeing people like my friends now a lot of them are very different like financially and status wise and whatever as, like status isn't as much of a thing in germany as it is here like here i think people care not care a lot more but there's much more talk of being common or posh and like tension between that still but it has been such a good i think learning experience for me now to see a more real image of what people's lives are like and it makes me like so grateful for what i have and i think both ends are so important because i met so many international people and so many people from different cultures which was really really valuable it's a bubble like i said i'm so grateful to my parents for sending me there and you know working very very hard there's so much to be said for the fact they grew up in you know communist romania they didn't have many rights they didn't have much money and they worked so hard their whole lives to give me and my sister a better life and i could not be more grateful to them i love them so so much they're also just great parents which makes things so much better and like i'm really lucky in that sense i had a very happy upbringing you know we went like on family holidays and my parents my dad works quite a bit but he was never like he very very rarely took trips away from home so he's always around so is my mom who had more flexible hours because she was a doctor which just meant we spent a lot of time together and i love spending that time with them we still get to go to see my grandparents my family in romania a lot which i'm also so grateful for like, i did have a very happy childhood i would say one thing about my childhood is like i struggled and i still struggle quite a bit with this and i will oh my god i'm almost stopping myself from saying struggle because one of my teachers at drama school does not allow us to say struggled something can challenge us but like she basically doesn't like this whole idea of which i totally agree with that we need to get something right away and know something right away and it's kind of like institutionalized into us from school and stuff so she's trying to break us free of that which is why she doesn't like it when we say struggle because you don't need to get it right away and not everything like they teach you at acting school is gonna make sense to you or help you and that's okay and like the whole thing especially for first year is about learning and second year is about learning what works for you and trying everything like be open to everything and then see what works for you and what helps you and leave what doesn't because it doesn't help you there's no point and you don't have to get it and you don't need to know it to be a good actor you just need to know what gets you there but um i struggled as a kid my, like my biggest struggle all my like my whole life basically i am getting better kind of like it is really hard and i said last episode like i want to make an episode about being a people pleaser and i so do i had a really interesting chat actually yesterday with one of my roommates about how i just make it so easy for people like i'm so available and i make it so easy for them to treat me like shit like i'm so there for them too much so and then like i put them on a pedestal and i overvalue our friendship before it might be there yet or if i'm not getting that back and i'm just like i put my all into it because i want that friendship if i love someone i want to show them how much i love them i want to be there for them and everything and then when they don't do the same for you it hurts a lot and it's really really hard to navigate because like where's the balance you know and then you get scared like if you're not going to continue doing that are you still going to be friends at all so definitely a whole podcast episode i think it'd be really interesting actually to bring on my friend because actually both of my roommates um have kind of experienced the situation but anyway as a kid i really really struggled making friends so much so that i call myself like an introvert when i'm not i am so fucking extroverted like i like being around people fucking 24 7 i don't need a break i love it so much which in itself can be a challenge sometimes when they don't want to spend time not that when they need breaks which now i think my friends are a lot more extroverted but my friends back home who i love so so much every single one of them is an introvert for my friend group one of my best friends is also an extrovert but i used to think i was an introvert because i just had so much trouble making friends and i think yeah i was all like my whole life i think i've been too nice and too available and too like trying to do anything to make not pe make people like me because that's not that wasn't the goal but like just to have friends and show my friends that i love them so that they would want to be friends with me i guess is the reasoning behind it suddenly it just doesn't work like it doesn't make it any better but i was saying to my friend that i had this talk to about yesterday i think because the three of us we've all had this experience we actually all treat each other in that way and we all are super nice to each other value each other a lot and are there for each other me doing that has not with the three of them has not been an issue because we all kind of do it and we all just actually value friendship and i guess have empathy for each other going through that because we've all been through it at least to some extent which has been great just in terms of you know having understanding for each other and just having like a solid friend group solid friends and just people who are there for you which is so nice and i just remember like as a kid and this is definitely a conversation to also have with my parents and like see their insights on it i was just not the happiest kid which is, has nothing 
to do with my parents. Genuinely, they did everything they could possibly do to be the best parents ever and give me the best life they possibly could. I just didn't know how to make friends and I like I've always been kind of treated this way and like taken advantage of and like not given what I give to a friendship in return. I am part of the problem in the sense that I let people walk all over me and treat me like shit and we're trying to move away from that. I just always thought there was something wrong with me and I was doing something wrong and like for so much, I think the older you get, the better you get at things in life and if you struggle with one of those things like making friends, it's really fucking hard as a kid. I don't know how to fucking explain it but like especially middle school I think, I just didn't have a whole lot of friends and I remember like my sister would spend, you know, have sleepovers with her friends and whatever and I did, like I did have some friends, I wasn't completely alone or whatever but then a lot of the time I would just have a lot more free time than she did basically and like a lot like on a weekend or a holiday or a day off from school or whatever. It just always felt like she was doing a lot and I wasn't. I think my childhood trauma now, actually. I just, I don't even know how to explain, like, my struggle with making friends. We grew from that, we moved on from that. I'm still, like, bad at making friends, but I think, like, I had some really toxic friendship. Again, and I think I, like, I was part of the problem, I will admit that, because I just latch on to people. I still do, I know. Where, like, if we're friends, I'll do everything, not I'll do everything for you, but, like, I'll try my best to be a really good friend as quick as possible, and whether the other person is there or not, as in there in terms of our closeness or whatever, and not everyone does that, because not everyone has time. People don't have time to do that and like to function like that. But I think I have been slowly learning not to put myself in those friendships anymore and like not try so hard with friends or if they're not giving me what I'm giving them. Okay, well, if you want to put the effort into our friendship, like then I'll be there for you and we can be great friends. But if you're not going to do it, we don't have to be super close friends. And one of the biggest things I realized actually is you don't have to be best friends with everyone you meet, which is I think something I try to do hugely far, far, far too much because I just want, I just wanted to be friends with everybody and I just wanted friends. Um, and I had friends, but it was just hard. So I think like realizing some friends, you know, you go to workout classes with or you see once a month or once a year or you talk to every once in a while or you talk to them in class but you don't really talk to them outside of class, whatever. Like there's so many different types of friendships you can have and just because they're not like the utmost maximum level of friendship or whatever doesn't mean they're not valued relationships. Sometimes you just don't click that much that you're that close of friends or sometimes like you just don't have time for that and that's okay. It's not like a thing of you suck if you're not going to be that close with me or commit that much to our friendship or whatever so that is something i am learning or trying to yeah i think that's made a big difference in my life and then yeah so basically i did school in english i always had german classes but it is really hard speaking multiple languages i also took spanish for five years which my spanish isn't great i mean i had a great teacher i love my teacher for the first three years so much and i learned so much from her and then it kind of i didn't put that much effort into learning spanish but it, it was easier because i speak romanian and there are a lot of similarities between it i say i speak spanish Ish. I speak a little bit of Spanish. I can definitely understand a fair amount. And even like Italian and French, I can understand a fair amount. Can't speak a word of Italian or French, but I can understand a lot, especially of Italian, because French is more complicated and just sounds more different from like Spanish, Italian, Romanian. But because they're all Romance languages, I can understand a lot of it. Because I went to an international school, so much of my life was consumed by English. Like all my friends spoke English. I spent spoke English to my friends. Eventually I started speaking English to my sister because we spent so much of our lives with that that we did that too. With my family, I always for the most part at first it was German that I spoke more because growing up in Germany first and then like being in kindergarten in Germany or whatever that made German my main language not Romanian even though I am Romanian but we always spoke German and Romanian at home which I'm so grateful to my parents for I love the fact that I speak Romanian like I have met people who don't speak you know the language of the country they're from and I like no shit on those parents like it is really fucking hard to teach your kids another language and you also like my parents even said it they almost prioritized German when we were really little because they wanted to make sure we spoke German really well and they wanted us to speak Romanian as well but their priority was German because we were gonna live there and they wanted us to have like a, as much of a full happy life in Germany as possible and especially my dad I think being an immigrant in the 1990s right after communism ended in Romania there was a lot of discrimination he faced not being German and he didn't want me and my sister to go through that as well so I think like assimilating in that sense would have really helped so we focused on German for the first like six years of our life then it became English because we had to learn English we, me and my sister both did EAL for two years and then we were out of it and we just took the normal English classes at my school so we learned English quite quickly which I think is just first I think part of it is the fact that we had already been learning two languages as kids so it just made like the more languages we learn I think the easier it is to pick up another because you're in that habit you know how to switch between languages and translate and your head whatever that process is that makes you just speak multiple languages and whatever so then English sh shifted to the focus and it kind of like our other languages kind of dropped and then Romanian is now what we speak at home because I personally don't like speaking German and the reason why is my German is great like genuinely okay grammar wise not perfect but like in terms of like speaking and hearing like I understand everything anyone says I'm never confused there's never a word I don't understand like it's not 
there's no issues with that. But my grammar isn't great. I would say, like, I'm still pretty good. Like, I still, in, like, German class when we did orals and writing tasks and whatever, like, I got almost, like, good grades. It's not bad by any means. I definitely, I definitely sell myself short, which is why I don't speak German, but it's not perfect, which doesn't have to be. But I think, and my accent isn't, I used to have, I used to have a Bavarian accent when I spoke Romanian and then that went away and I tried a German accent when I started learning English but that also went away and now I fucking sound American or international or whatever you want to call it Where's I going with that? Yeah, I have like a bit of an accent when I speak German and some people call it Austrian, which I'll go with that If you ask me if I'm Austrian, yeah, fuck yeah, I'm Austrian so, To be fair, which is also true because my mom is like an 8th Austrian or German or something Or 90% Romanian, Eastern European is fuck Like my grandparents, my great 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 grandparents are Russian, Ukrainian, Bulgarian, Polish Just Eastern European, so Eastern European, so fucking proud of it Me losing my chance, but yeah, if you if you want to call me Austrian, that, that's great But yeah, people do realize like that And then I'm insecure about that because I feel like, I feel like, and I know this is wrong But I feel like my German should be perfect because I grew up here And it's not like my parents didn't speak German, my parents speak German fluently Because they both went to a German school in Romania And my mom is a little bit German too, or Austrian and she doesn't know, to be clear. I I, I don't know because she doesn't know. Yeah, I'm just embarrassed if I like, fucking like, stop speaking German. Okay, in eighth grade, someone told me I sound like an idiot when I spoke German, which is fucking bullshit. And I know it's fucking bullshit, and that guy's just a dick. I'd never realized it before that I might have an accent or not or whatever. So that was the moment where I kind of stopped speaking German. And then I would say, because I was in the top German class, and then like, because they had German class for people who spoke German, and then German classes for people who didn't speak German. I was always the one that, for the people who did speak German, obviously because I fucking like grew up in Germany, born and raised in Germany, went to German kindergarten and everything. Like I was friends with the German kids because there were German kids at my school as well as a lot of international kids. I would always speak English to them. And then, and then I started, I started speaking German to them again in like 10th, 11th grade. I was like, fuck that. Like, it's fine. Just, just do it. No one gives a shit about how you sound. I even had this one guy like for my German class, who's in my class, who this other guy who's not even fucking German but was born and raised in Germany went to the class of people who don't speak the highest level but the class of people who don't speak German I was in the class of people who do speak German and decides shit on me on my about my German and this guy's like what the fuck are you talking about first of all I'll grade right in German and she's one of the only not German there and so that's one of the best friends and then like he basically just defended me I was like oh that was really sweet because we weren't any friends or anything I just started speaking German to him and like other guys and other other people again and i think it freed me a bit and now i'm less worried about it. like fuck it if someone says something i don't care but i do but i don't but they do it's more of like if someone has said something before i would care about it and be like now if someone says about it i'll care about it but i'll be like in my head i know that it's not a problem there's nothing to be ashamed about in my heart we're working on it the weird thing is my romanian is way worse than my german but i'm way more comfortable way more happy speaking it and i think a big part of that is just that fuck i lost my train of thought i think a big part of that is just like i guess i have more of an excuse for my romanian being bad because i never grew up there and i only spoke it with my parents and that is really difficult and did make it really difficult to learn as a language and to master and like i have an accent and my grammar's shit and whatever but i also understand pretty much everything like there's always some words that i will understand and everything but i can speak to my grandparents perfectly i can communicate to anyone in romania and whatever and i'm less insecure about it because i think also i just speak it all the time with my family which helps less so now which is really fucking sad and a little bit concerning i also have, i haven't spoken german fucking forever because uh, i don't even speak to you with my family so i just speak it when i go home every once in a while which is not great for my german but i what i have been trying to do is watch because i won't i hate reading in german just because it takes so much longer and then it's harder to get into or whatever i tried to do that but what i've been really trying to do is watch like German YouTube videos. I found this one YouTuber called Yulia Beauty. It's like beauty but with an X instead of a Y. I love her content and then I just watched that and I think that helps me like just keep the German in my life a little bit so I don't lose it because that would not be good. But yeah being multilingual is interesting because it's it is it's just this really interesting phenomenon phenomenon and on. It's just this really interesting weird balance of like being able to speak a lot of languages but none of them perfectly. Which technically my English is Perfect and my German is near perfect and my Romanian is good, but yeah, it's not quite the same and it's a bit weird. <laughs> like I think people are always saying learn another language, learn another language, whatever, and I completely agree to that. But I also think it's just fair to share the other side of it because it can make you just insecure and it's hard. It's hard to learn multiple languages fully, properly, completely, confidently. I actually, I actually almost have to go to class, so I'm gonna go. I'm not done yet though. This, oh my god, the first podcast episode, I didn't realize how short it was because it was 34 minutes when I finished it, which also isn't, is not long at all for a podcast. But then when I edited it, it was 20 minutes. I thought it'd be longer because I'm talking the whole time, but I did like cut out a lot of the ums and the pauses. I think I need to find a balance with that because I know you just edit your podcast less than you do like a normal YouTube video. It only came to 20 minutes, but now we're already 52 minutes and I want to keep talking, but I actually have to go soon. So I have class in half an hour. Now to lead me to this is my life story, but it's not really my life story because there's not much to my life story. But 
in my whole life, I've been super creative, um, super into the arts, super into acting, especially, but music, anything, not drawing, can't draw for shit, um, horrible at it, but I've loved that my whole life. It's really, like, it sounds so cliche and dramatic and whatever, but, like, it's only been the only thing that's ever really, like, been, like, a viable path to me. Like, I always wanted to be an actor or an author or a singer or whatever, like, something creative. I love it so much, and it's the only thing that really, like, fulfills me, um, properly and excites me and whatever, because it's just so fascinating and interesting and, like, unique. And you just make stuff and i love i just love making shit up like for fun for funsies so just being able to do that and like making something beautiful out of it is absolutely insane to me we're not going to talk about that like i and i can talk for hours about how much i love art and acting or whatever and we can do like full episodes on that so if you want that let me know comment down below or dm me or whatever i kind of chose i guess i chose acting i chose no i didn't choose me i chose acting um and i was always like in every play and then i think in like 10th grade is when I kind of started sort of pursuing it more seriously. My parents never like put me up for auditions or anything, which I think I right now I'd be like, oh, if I only I was a child star and then like it would make things easier for me because I'd, you know, be at that point already. But like at the same time, that is a crazy fucking hard world to grow up in. And I'm like, they did save me from, from that, so I'm glad, glad for that. But I started like looking for roles online, looking for the little things, whatever. And then I did, you know, theater in the last two years of high school. I did the IB, which also, oh my God, I was gonna talk about this well, in this episode, it's awful. We can talk about that another time if you want. I can do IB tips too. It's basically this really hard international baccalaureate, like high school diploma thing that you have to do a two year program for. And it was horrible and soul sucking, but that's okay, I survived it. Yeah, I just started pursuing it more. I did like a couple of courses with like Royal Conservatory of Scotland and different drama schools in the UK, which were really good. I kind of set my sights on the UK because I knew I wanted to do in English. I also considered like schools in Germany and stuff. I just wanted to do in English. I knew that. So I, I applied to so many fucking drama schools and we can do a full episode, multiple episodes on like getting into drama school, applying for drama school, blah, 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 because there's so much to it. But all of last year, all of 12th grade, I auditioned for drama schools. I started in like October of 2022 preparing. My last audition was actually in August when I kind of wrapped up the auditions was in May, which I actually have a whole vlog of that on my YouTube channel. I have a couple videos about drama school, which you can check out if you want to know more about it. And like I said, I'm very happy and would love to actually do more episodes of the podcast about this. Yeah, I auditioned to a bunch of places, got into some places which were like less drama school left because there's like drum drama school is like the top tier of like an acting school you can go to it's a bachelor three-year program usually and it's just the best of the best basically and then there's like not lesser drama schools but there's like less established drama schools so like honestly you can go to a lot of different drama schools and make a great career out of it because the drama school does not make the person you can go to an amazing drama school and be a horrible well not be a horrible actor because usually you have to be good to get in but like never amount to anything as an actor which is sad to think about but you can also go to not as good of a drama school and you know get really far if you're talented and you work hard so it doesn't make or break you i was then going to go to a drama school actually in spain which was an, a british style drama school in english in spain but then in august of last year this opportunity to audition for a new Rose Bruford College, which Rose Bruford is one of the top drama schools in the UK. And they were starting a new program here in um, Wigan, which is next to Manchester. And there was an audition came up because I'd auditioned for Rose Bruford, but not gotten in. And so I auditioned and I just did it on a whim. I just sent in a random self tape. I was like, I'll just do it, whatever. Not thinking I would go there enough, not thinking anything would come of it. Like I was gonna go to Spain. That was gonna be my life. Missed the beach, so sad about the beach. But I got in, which I wasn't expecting, and then I decided to move here, and it's been the craziest, but best thing I've ever done in my life. I've never been so happy, and that's not to say it hasn't been hard, because it is hard. It's really hard work. It's hard dealing with, like, how insecure you are and how much you can p compare yourself to other people, at least it is for me. But I made so many friends. I've been having the best time. It's hard being away from your family, too. Like, moving to a whole other country, it doesn't feel real at all. It doesn't feel real that my parents are far away. And it's weird how much, I'm, like I said, we can do a whole episode on this. It's weird how much you can compartmentalize being away, like before I left, after, like I just had Christmas break, before I left, I was a fucking wreck, like I cried, leaving my sister, I cried, leaving my parents, I was so sad, I just didn't want to leave my family because I love my family so much. And then the minute I'm here, and this happened when I first moved here, here, and then there I was more excited, like sad about leaving, but also more excited to just finally start. The minute I'm here, I'm like, eh, it's fine. Like I miss them so much, I feel almost bad saying that, cause like I do miss them so, so, so fucking much. I want to make that so clear, but it's like out of sight, out of mind, which my friend, when she went to uni, because she's two years older than me, explained that to me, sort of, and I just didn't get it. I was like, how can you not miss them like crazy? But I do, I do miss them like crazy, but at the same time, I don't, like, I'm just so happy here, which I'm so lucky for again and grateful for. It's not that I forget about them, because I don't, and we FaceTime a lot, and I'm thinking about them all the time, and I talk to them all the time, but I just, it's just, I guess it's in a box locked away, and then sometimes it comes up, but it doesn't come up as often as I thought it would, and I miss hugs. 
my friends do hug me i love my friends but like i like 20 hugs a day and i don't get that here it's just so i don't know how to explain the fact like i miss them so much but at the same time i don't it's not that i don't miss them i just they're not like at the forefront of my mind all the time which is weird i also just remembered i had to put my hair up in a messy bun for my character today um i also have to wear pajamas which i'm not wearing pajamas right now but like i'm gonna bring in some cute little silk pajamas for my role for my character that i'm doing right now yeah it's just hard to deal with and like understand like you miss your family but you don't miss them that much and then you feel guilty for not missing them that much and at the same time ugh, i wish i could be around there. i wish they were closer like i wish it wasn't so expensive and far of a trip and journey to get home and everything so yeah being new is hard it's fucking hard but it's okay, we are getting through it. And yeah, I love it here. I'm in my first year of drama school now, almost halfway through actually, which is crazy to think about alone. We've had so, so much fun, such good times. And yeah, like I said, I can do a full episode on that. It's been an hour now, which yay, we got more filmed and I do have to go sadly i'm gonna leave this episode here but yeah i hope you guys like this podcast if you do let me know what you want me to talk about like i've said 500 million times but i love you guys i love doing this actually just not shutting up it's so much fun so i hope you like it as well and yeah if you're on apple or spotify or something rate the podcast i think you can do follow me on instagram follow me on tiktok subscribe to my youtube channel and i'll see you guys next week for another episode of the spotlight podcast no under the spotlight did i say spotlight or under the spotlight i can't even fucking remember that's great um subscribe to the under the spotlight podcast for the spotlight podcast but it's really my youtube channel at least after you go and do it please because please <laughs> please okay bye